Do you want to learn to draw realistic looking portraits? In this series, I will teach you how to blend colour pencils for a wide range of skin tones. All of this without using a blender. So make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss a video in this series. And if you're watching from the future, the playlist will be linked down below. In this video, I'll show you the basics of blending for a beginner. So grab your tools and come and draw along with me. sketchbook I'll be using for this tutorial is the Arteza Grey Tone Paper. It is 120 GSM and it's ideal for a variety of dry media. So it's nice grey toned paper. I think when you use colouring pencils it pops a lot more on coloured backgrounds. The surface doesn't have any type of grip so it'll be harder to blend with the colouring pencils but it shouldn't be a problem. The pencils I'll be using are the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. If you're interested in all the materials I use for my normal pieces, then definitely have a look at my art supplies video and you see details about everything. These have a very hard lead, which makes them harder to blend. Now, if you manage to complete a good blend with these, then you can use anything. The first thing you need to know is that you should keep your pencils sharp. It might not feel like a big deal, but it really makes a massive difference. Then I'm going to show you how to hold your pencil. So depending on how you hold your pencil depends on the kinds of strokes you can produce. Holding your pencil closer gives you firmer, harder strokes. It's generally, if you want to cover an area with more pressure, holding the pencil further away gives you lighter strokes. Also, my hand is more loose when I hold it further but this is a great kind of technique you need where you've got a large area that you just need to sweep color on and you can see that this one pencil can already give a nice blend in itself with blending there are a few types of strokes you can do you can do a straight back and forth or you can do circular motions depending on the area and blending depends on the type of stroke i go for with each of these, you can also layer different colours. So for example, I'm going to take a slightly different colour and going backwards, layer it into this pencil. Where the pencils combine, there's a slightly different tone. So say for example, I was doing an area in this colour, but I could use the darker colour to create some nice shadows. The same with the circular technique. You can ease in to try to fill in the gaps. It's definitely easier to get a blend the lighter you go and the more circular you go but it's possible to do so with both methods the key to blending skin tones is that you can really combine the color and pencils to make a new color so if you see your reference and you see a particular color and you don't have one color pencil in front of you in that color then you can combine pencils to create that color now that we've learned the fundamentals, I will show you how to blend these two gradients. I've got a white to black gradient and a colourful gradient. I will also be listing out all the colours that I'm using. So if you're using a Faber-Castell set as well, then you're in luck. But if not, you can definitely still follow along with whichever colours that you have. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to blend down a straight line. I'm going to show you the colours I'll pick. I'm going to go from white to black in the first instance and then a multicolored one. So here are the colors I'll be using for this example. I'm using white, cold gray, cold gray two, cold gray three, cold gray four, cold gray five. I hope you know your Roman numerals. Cold gray six and then black. This black is tiny, so I'm gonna put it in a pencil extender. I've got it in this Derwent pencil extender and it's great because now I can use it like a normal pencil. First thing you want to do is to lightly map out where all the colours are going to go. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go from the white and the good thing about drawing on grey paper is that you can really see white in comparison to if you were drawing on white. So I'm just thinking about breaking this into six roughly. So I'm just going light overall, not worrying too much about coverage. And then I'm going to do the darkest, which is the black, round the edges in the straight line. And because this is a straight object that I'm drawing in, I'm just going in up and down motions. And apparently I cannot color in the lines. 
don't worry if you don't have as many greys in your set you can definitely do this with fewer in fact i'm going to remove a few of these greys that are similar for now so you can still see them up here in case you're following on with me with the same set the ones i removed were the cold gray one cold gray three and cold gray six with the cold gray two my aim is to cover a third of the page so a third is about here a third of the space that's left so i'm just gonna lightly go over it i chose to use the cold grays for this tutorial because the book i'm drawing on is a warm gray so using cold gray would be a lot more striking so now i'm just putting the color down as you can see i'm not trying to blend anything at this point then i'm gonna cover another third and there is a little bit of a jump between the cold gray two and the cold gray four which is what i'm using now and if you notice on the edge of this section i'm not trying to keep it in a straight line i want it to be as feathered as possible that's what will help it blend as well and now for the last third on the page i'm going to use the cold gray five and again i'm just going kind of rough just wanting to map out where i want things to go now that i've mapped it out i can see that i want a longer lighter transition so by that i mean i want to improve the mid-tone grays that i have i'm gonna take the white again and now this is where you need to be careful on the top edge i'm gonna hold the pencil closer to the bottom and for the actual edge, I'm going to go in the opposite direction that I've been blending in. And you can see that it produces a more opaque colour. I'm also going to press hard on the rest of the section to fill it in. The going in this way has made a very strong white. And I'm going to go down nearly to where I meet the cold grey 2 line. And I'm going to start going over the edges of the cold grey 2. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cold grey one that I pushed aside and I'm going to use that over the edges. So just over the bits that overlap, I'm going to use the cold grey one and again I'm pressing down fairly hard. I'm trying to be careful around the lines but I'm also using that to go over some of the white. It's a back and forth thing. I'm working backwards into the white and I'm working forward into the cold grey too. I'm also using some other techniques, so I'm also going in a circular motion around pressure points. Next, I'm going to take the cold grey too, which is the main colour we used for this section, and from the point where it reaches the cold grey 4, I'm going to start lightly going over that section just to help its blend. And then I'm using the cold grey too to fill in the rest of its section. Its section is looking a little bit transparent at this point, so I just need some help filling that in. Next, I'm going to take the cold grey 3, and on the edge where I can see that the cold grey 4 meets the cold grey 2, I'm going to lightly go back into cold grey 2 and work in circular motions. And I'm also going to work in up and down motion, trying to go back into the cold grey two to produce a smooth blend. Now that I've got a blend that I'm happy with, and remember this is only layer two, so if your blend isn't looking as you want it to yet, that's okay. We can definitely come back and keep layering. Oops. So now that I've got a blend that I'm happy with, I'm going to use the cold grey three and I'm going to go down a little bit more towards the bottom. This is the point where we meet the cold grey 5, so it's fine that this blend isn't fine yet because we can still use the cold grey 4 to help us. Next, I'm going to take the cold grey 4 and I'm going to go in circular motions upwards towards cold grey 3. And honestly, it all just comes down to trusting the process. I always mention in my speed drawing videos, the drawings go through an ugly stage and it just takes persistence, perseverance and patience to get over that stage. If I stopped a drawing every time I thought it was looking awful and it wasn't blending and it wasn't cute, I would have no drawings in my portfolio right now. 
So with cold grey 4, I am blending upwards into cold grey 3 and downwards into what will now be cold grey 5 and 6. After doing that, I'm going to go with my cold grey 5 and I'm going to blend in circular motions at the transitionary point and I'm going to blend downwards into the black. I'm going to take cold grey 6 and I'm just going to blend upwards into cold grey 5, trying to think about its transition into black and again I can't colour inside the lines, please do better than me. I'm going to go circular upwards and then faintly downwards into what will be black. Finally I'm going to take the black and I'm just going to go in the opposite direction, I'm going to go over this line so that I hide my sins. And I'm going to go as hard as I go. So this is the same kind of pressure I put when I was using the white at the start. Because I know those colours, this is an area of no transition at all. I'm trying to get the most opaque colour I can. And with that, then in circular motions, I'm blending upwards. So now this is what it's looking like. It's looking like a really nice blend. I can just see areas that I want to fix. So I can see that the transition between the black and the gray here isn't as seamless as it could be. And the transition between the light gray and the gray there. So I'm just gonna keep going with the techniques, going back and forth with the colors, trying to produce a blend that I'm ultimately happy with. It's a work in progress, it's a back and forth process. The first time you do it, you might not be happy with it. I promise you the next time you try it, you would have learned something. So it's just worth the practice. I'm also trying to get to the point where I can't see any of the paper underneath. This is a very important point to get to with drawings because you don't wanna see some of the grace through the drawing, at least not with full realism. Now I am happy with this blend. Next I'm going to go for a rainbow blend. I'll be using pale geranium lake, dark cadmium orange, dark cadmium yellow, light green, ultramarine and blue violet. So for this one I have six colours so I'm going to try to split the page into six roughly and I'm just going to put the first layer of my colour down. So for the top of the page, I know that that's going to be a solid red. So I'm going to go harder, but overall I'm going to put a light layer down. Again, I don't want the edges to be solid. I'm trying to diffuse the edges as well. The edges of where this color stops. I'm not trying to do any blending, I'm just putting the colour down in this first instance. With the colours placed down in this manner, it is possible to be able to blend these. However, I'm going to choose some transitionary colours to help with that process. So for the red to orange blend, I'm going to use this light cadmium red and I'm just going to use this in the points where they overlap and I'm just going in circular motions. I'm going to go about a third of the way up and down into the blend. The next transitionary colour I'm going to use is cadmium orange and again I'm going to use it in the points that they overlap. So I'm going to go in circular motions. Again, I'm not trying to do too much else. I just want to help this blend here. Next, I'm going to use cadmium yellow lemon in the points where the yellow and green overlap. And I'm going to go in circular motion, sometimes straight motion, just to help that little bit to blend. In the points where the green and blue overlap, I'm going to use this light cobalt turquoise. Again, just going in the circular motions.
in the points where the blue and purple overlap, I'm going to use cobalt blue greenish. And I'm guessing that's around here. And I'm just going in circular motions once again, just to help ease the blend. These five are the transitionary colours I've just added in. Now, this might look a little bit crazy to you, but now it's the time to do the back and forth to try to get it to really blend. And this is where the perseverance comes in. So I'm going to go with, with my first red, which is Pale Geranium Lake. Try to get an opaque top. The end goal is so that you can't see any of the paper grain through the drawing. So ultimately, we want some sort of opaque covering. Now, when I go towards the transition, then I go lighter with my strokes. And you can still see some of the paper covering, but that's fine because when we use the orange from the original, which was the dark cadmium orange, we're now going to go upwards into the red to cover some of the paper. And this is all blending is. It's just a back and forth to try to make the transition look as seamless as possible. So I'm going in up and down motions, I'm going in circular motions. Now we've got a good enough covering. I'm going to go in with the yellow from the start, which was the dark cadmium yellow. Try to use it to cover some of these gaps I can see. Then I'm going to go with the transitionary orange, which was the cadmium orange, over the same sections I just covered. and back upwards. Now that I'm happy enough with that blend for the moment, I'm going to go in with the transitionary yellow, which was the cadmium yellow lemon, and I'm going to go upwards with it in circular motions towards the orange transition that I can see. And remember, the end goal is to cover the tooth of the paper. So I'm going to go in whatever motion to try to diffuse the orange that I can see. Going back in with the dark cadmium yellow, I can go back downwards to try to diffuse the transition. And again, working in circular motions. Now that I've got that somewhat diffused, I'm going to use the cadmium yellow lemon to go downwards towards what will be the green transition. I'm just going super light because I know I'm about to do some blend with the green. Now taking the light green, I'm going upwards towards the yellow and at the same time trying to diffuse this blue edge that I've got here. And you can see that because the pencil is sharp, it's able to make way through the tooth of the paper to put its own colour down. If the pencil was blunt, everything would just be a blurry mess, which is sometimes good for blending, but sometimes you really need the colour to come through as well. Now that I've got a nice blend of green into the yellow, I'm going to go downwards towards this blue to help its blend. Then I'm using the light cobalt turquoise and the aim of this is just to diffuse where that blue starts and I'm going in circular motions in the opposite direction just trying to diffuse this in the best way and then I'm putting down its own colour so that you can actively see it. Now I'm going to go in with the ultramarine blue and I just want to cover this section of the drawing where it gets into a deeper blue to help with that blend. Going back in with the cobalt turquoise, we really want this blend to be as seamless as possible. Finally, we're going to go in with the last colour, which is the blue violet, which is a purple. And I'm going to go in the opposite direction at the bottom 
and then very strong strokes from the bottom because this is the confident final color we want to finish on we don't need too much of a transition right at the bottom of this rectangle but as we go up then we diffuse it and we go with lighter strokes when you do lighter strokes they usually go quicker so you can extend it as much as you need to now that we've got layer two down it's a good blend but i'm just going to keep working at it so that i have a more vibrant green gradient here the yellow kind of starts here and then the green is lost in the blues so i'm gonna go over it and try to make the green a little bit higher make a nicer blue blend and an overall opaque color scheme so i'm gonna go in with the green and i'm pressing harder with the pencil because I know that I'm sure of this color right now. So I'm just going in upward motions and trying to go into the blue as much as possible as well. I'm gonna go back with the yellow and again, much more confident strokes for the final layers and back upwards and into the green. This green blue diffusion if you're anything like me being a perfectionist it's going to take some work to get it to a good enough point but with work we'll definitely get there i'm taking the yellow all the way down here as well because i'm just trying to diffuse the blue and this yellow and blue obviously you know blue and yellow combine to make green so it makes the blue light enough for me to be happy with the green that it's given me I'm happy with the green blend I'm going to take this light turquoise blue and use that for this blend and again I'm working this as far downwards as possible and working back upwards as well back with the purple I'm not happy with the opacity of the bottom Oops, cannot colour in lines. So I'm going in the opposite direction and going upwards. And I am reducing the pressure as I get upwards. Again, going in the opposite direction and going to diffuse the point. And again, I'm going to try to make its own new bottom since I can't colour in lines. Well done for getting to the end of this video. And if you are drawing along with me, well done for completing this blend. I would love to see your blends on Instagram. So make sure you tag me at temi underscore danso and I will give it a like. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for the remaining parts of this series and I will see you on my next video. Goodbye. Amazing God is eyes, but my heart still beats. When I say no, we dress, I'm putting you to the test.